Hello everyone, Mords here. Recently I got myself a new 3D printer, the almighty Bamboo Lab X1 Carbon, and since it claims to have a lot of improvements over other 3D printers, I wanted to compare its speed to my Ultimaker 2 Plus, which I bought way back in 2016. First up, let's talk about the test print. I decided to go with this arm piece of a solder fume extractor, which is not the simplest part to print at high speeds. Since the part does not have any infill and only consists of two outer shells, printing this at higher speeds might lead to deformations because the material does not have enough time to cool down. Also I have already printed a few of these on my Ultimaker and tuned the slicer settings to print them as fast as possible. So, how long does it take to print the part on the Ultimaker? With a 0.8mm nozzle, 0.2mm layer height and outer wall speed of 29mm per second, which is the default for 45mm per second print speed, it takes around 2 hours. If we force the 3D printer to also print the outer walls at 45mm per second, we can reduce the print time by half an hour to 1 hour and 35 minutes. Going any higher than 45 mm per second, and I have also tried 60 mm per second, leads to the part deforming due to insufficient cooling on the Ultimaker. Now let's take a look at the X1 Carbon. To make it unfair, I did the first test print with a 0.4 mm nozzle and 0.2 mm layer height in normal mode. But to be fair, this is already 200 mm per second for outer walls, 50 mm per second for overhangs and sometimes even 250 mm per second. And the X1 Carbon absolutely killed it with a printing time of around 38 minutes. Though if you factor in the time it takes to do the bed leveling, flow rate calibration and layer inspection, we are looking at 45 minutes, but that is also a lot faster than the Ultimaker. To take it a step further, I also switched out the nozzle of the X1 Carbon to a 0.8mm one just like in the Ultimaker. I also kept the default print settings, which are a little bit different compared to the 0.4mm nozzle. For the 0.8mm one, we are looking at a 0.4mm layer height and a surprisingly slower print speed of 71.51mm per second and also 50mm per second for overhangs. Though this results in an even faster print time of around 29 minutes and with preparation 38 minutes, which is 7 minutes faster. Okay, let's put the printer to the test by keeping the 0.8mm nozzle print settings but switching to the sport mode and changing the seam position to nearest. This cranks up the printer to 124% speed, which would be 88.7mm per second and 62mm per second for overhangs, but this leads to some issues. On the first try, the part did not adhere to the build plate, but the spaghetti detection of the printer detected this and notified me, which is already a good test on its own. While it took the printer 2 minutes to notice, this is still better than coming home noticing the whole spool has been turned into spaghetti. Next I tried to change the speed after the print was started and the printer had already put down some layers, but the first thing that I saw was a big hole in the print, so I stopped it. For the next try I changed the print speed as soon as I could. This time it adhered, but there was a hole again. So I stopped it and set the seam position back to aligned and tried again. This time it printed without any holes and took an astonishing 22 minutes and with preparation 27 minutes, which is crazy if you ask me. We are down to half an hour for an initial print time of 2 hours. Essentially I can print 4 times as much in the same time, but there are some caveats. Let's take a look at how the prints turned out and how they compare to one another. The reference print at 2 hours looks quite good on the outside. We can see individual layers if we look really close and there is a somewhat noticeable seam on one side. The inside looks also very clean, but not as good as the outside. Next is the optimized print at one and a half hours. Here the outside does not look much different compared to the two hour print, but the seam is more noticeable. On the inside we also get some stringing at the top and the seam also looks worse. Now onto the optimized print at 60mm per second. While the bottom half looks really good, the top part suffers from some warping due to insufficient cooling. This can also be seen on the inside. The bottom part looks no different than before. Let's take a look at the more interesting prints. The fastest print at half an hour does not look good at all. We can see a lot of warping on the bottom part and there is almost a hole. The seam almost leaves the gap as well. The top part looks a little better. On the inside we can see some severe stringing on the bottom part, which explains why there are almost two holes. Also we can see another gap where the second seam should be. What about the second fastest print at 40 minutes total print time? 
This part looks quite good and clean, it can already keep up with the quality of the Ultimaker prints, though the seam is very noticeable with its gap. We can also see where the seam of the inside is. On the inside we also get some minor stringing, but it looks clean. Let's take a look at the last print, which is also my favorite of them all. Coming in at 45 minutes, this part looks and feels better than any part so far. This might also be due to the reduced layer height and smaller nozzle, but the part is smooth and clean. You can still see a seam, so there is some room for improvement. The inside is also very nice and you can almost not see any layers. All in all, I'm really pleased with the Bamboo Lab X1 Carbon. While there is still some room for improvement for the slicer and how seams are handled, I really like to get high quality prints faster than ever before. I would also like to hear what you have to say about the Bamboo Lab X1 Carbon. Just write a comment or join my Discord server. Link is in the description. Oh, and also don't forget to like, share and subscribe, because this really makes a difference. Have a good one. Bye.